Imagine you're looking to buy something, maybe a gadget or a kitchen utensil or a piece of clothing. What's the first thing you would do? Probably go to an e-commerce website, your Amazons or Mintras. It's the default reaction for most of us. It tells you how common online shopping is. But India's Commerce Minister says that's not necessarily a good thing. He's called it a matter of concern. Just think about it. Are we going to cause huge social disruption with this massive growth of e-commerce? And I don't see it a matter of pride that half our market could possibly become a part of the e-commerce network 10 years from now. It's a matter of concern. Cloud kitchens, what is the impact of these cloud kitchens? Very nice, four or five uh, chefs will get a work there and four or five delivery boys. Of course, we'll end up becoming a country of couch potatoes watching OTT and having food at home every day. Or friendship, ghar pe baith ke OTT pe Swiggy or Zomato order karke, friendships nahi create hoti hai. Wo to coffee shop mein jaake create hoti hai. The minister basically raised two problems. Number one, the health impact. He says e-commerce is turning us into couch potatoes. We are watching content on OTT, ordering food from home and even shopping from our couch. So the minister asks, where is the social interaction? What happened to going out for dinner or physical shopping? Which brings us to concern number two, the impact on local businesses. Piyush Goel says e-commerce giants are disrupting the market. They're edging out millions of small retailers. And he specifically targeted Amazon. Listen to this. When Amazon says we are going to invest a billion dollars in India and we all celebrate, we forget the underlying story that that billion dollars is not coming in for any great service or any great investment to support the Indian economy. They made a billion dollars loss in their balance sheet the, that year. They have to fill in that loss. If you make 6,000 crore loss in one year, does that not smell of predatory pricing to any of you? What did that loss come on? They are, after all, an e-commerce platform. Some background first. Global e-commerce giants cannot sell directly in India. They cannot stock or sell anything. They can only let others sell on their platform. Basically, they're a marketplace. But the reality is quite different. These platforms do sell directly using shady networks. Have you wondered how Amazon or Flipkart are able to give such steep discounts? Or why products always seem cheaper online? The minister says it could be predatory pricing. And what is that? Well, companies purposely charge less for a product. Yes, they will incur a loss, but they will also add plenty of new customers. So the trade-off is worth it, or so they say. The Commerce Minister also came with numbers. He says Amazon reported 6,000 crore rupees in losses. That's 714 million US dollars, which is a bit high for a marketplace company. So the theory is that this loss is because of predatory pricing. Of course, Amazon will deny all of this, but it gives us a chance to look at the e-commerce market in India. It's worth almost $70 billion already, $70, $70 billion, which is 7% of the total retail market. By the year 2030, it is projected to reach $325 billion. Now, if this projection holds $325 billion, India will become the third largest online market. And what about the users? How many Indians actually shop online? Just 4.3% of the population, that is all. Compare that to other countries. In China, it is 25%. In the UK, it is 23%. In India, only 4.3% of the population shops online. But the bottom line is quite clear. India's e-commerce industry is still growing, which is why the minister's comments are strange. Does the government want to put the brakes on e-commerce? Well, not quite. Piyush Goel accepted that e-commerce is here to stay, but he wants it to be more organized. He wants the pricing to be fair. Well, that's actually up to the government because consumers will always prioritize two things. One is low price and second, comfort. Right now, e-commerce offers both and the pandemic is also responsible for this change. Most Indians were locked down for more than a year, so they discovered e-commerce. In fact, it became their only option in a lot of cases, to buy groceries, to buy medicines, and to buy most essential goods. The pandemic may be behind us, but this practice has stayed. So the onus is now on the government. How can they regulate e-commerce in India? Well, they did try. We saw an attempt in late 2021. The government set up an open-source non-profit marketplace, ONDC. 
Open Network for Digital Commerce, ONDC. The idea was quite simple. Offer an alternative to the likes of Amazon or Swiggy or Zomato. That was what they were trying to do. No hidden costs, no predatory prices. Everything was supposed to be transparent. And how is ONDC doing? Well, they get around 60,000 food orders per day. 60,000 per day. Swiggy and Zomato get 2 million each. So there's a long way to go. But ultimately, there's only one solution. We need more competition because right now it is a duopoly. Flipkart makes up 48% of India's online market. Amazon makes up 26%. That's two companies with three quarters of the market. So it's easier for them to manipulate it. A more crowded market would certainly be fairer. But even then, some of the minister's concerns remain. Laziness for sure. But also the issue of small retailers. We're talking about millions of small neighborhood shops. Entire families depend on them. So if e-commerce takes over, what will these people do? Will they adapt to the online shopping trend? Or will they be wiped out? We say it's good that the government is asking the right questions. But I'm afraid the answers too must come from them.